This one's spicy. In a good way. The Hoka One One Zanel is a completely new trail shoe from the brand that brought us such great theakiets like the Mofate, the Challenger, the Stinson, the Speed Goat, and the 10.9. But the Zanel is different. With a 22 to 18 millimeter stack of responsive and dependable ProFly midsole, it's a low profile, super grippy trail shoe that will work in a variety of scenarios and brings back fond memories of one of my original Hoka faves, the Hoka. The Hoka Zanal features a simple, uninterrupted mesh upper with minimal overlays combined with a reduced layer of ProFly midsole all piled on pods of reputable Vibram Mega Grip outsole. This combo makes the Zanal a new favorite of mine for any distance under 20 miles. It's fast, it's comfortable, it's light, it's easy to get along with. The Zanal is a fun deviation from the mega stack Hoka is known for, but at $160, I told you it was spicy, is the Zanal doing enough? to justify a price like that. Let's dive in. Ginger Runner. What is up everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. I hope your summer is off to a great start. Guess what? It's been hot here, so maybe it's where you are too. Being that it's summer, I thought it was only fitting that I break out the Dennis Nedry slash Chunk from Goonies. Sure, I do really like it. All right, let's get into today's review. So we're talking about this brand new shoe from Hoka One One. It's called the Zanal. It's blue and orange and black and it's fun. I am legitimately excited about this shoe and I can't wait to talk about it. As with all of my reviews, of course, I have to point out at the very top that these were provided for review by Hoka One One. I'm under no obligation to say anything whatsoever about the shoe. No one has to approve this review or see my talking points or any of that. And I am also not financially compensated for anything in this review. It's all my opinions, it's all my thoughts, it's all my video, and you are the first to see it. Well done. As you know, we talk about the things I like and dislike about all the products I review on this channel. Zanal is no different. Let's start with the things that I like. Light and zippy. These shoes at 272 grams are on the lighter end of the spectrum. They also just feel really fast. Because that ProFly is a little bit thinner, 22 and 18 millimeters respectively from heel to toe, uh, they feel lower to the ground, they feel more responsive. They're definitely catered to those faster efforts and, and they're really, really fun. The ProFly dual density is just enough of what makes Hoka's great. So it does have a little bit of that cushioning. It also helps the Zanal be a capable shoe for various distances and surfaces. While some other Hoka shoes tend to be big and, and clunky, uh, these are on the other end of the spectrum, more towards the Torrent too, but even lighter and more responsive than those since they have a lower stack. Simplicity. So this is something I really like about the Zanal. It's like Hoka went to the drawing board and looked at the shoes that are really successful, uh, what makes them successful, and how could they take those elements and distill it down into its rawest, simplest form. So what you end up getting is this engineered mesh, just one piece, very minimal welded overlays across the top. You have a little bit of a toe guard and a single seam cover there. The tongue is gusseted, which I love. You have the ProFly midsole and you have some Vibram outsole pod elements. It really is just a simple platform. And I like that. There's not a lot of gimmick here. It really is just about going fast, staying low, getting good grip and being comfortable uh, across the foot. That simplicity uh, knocks this one out of the park. And finally, hybrid. So, uh, you know, we talk from time to time about uh, door to trail type shoes, uh, shoes that are capable of running on harder surfaces like concrete, pavement, gravel trails, and then transition to the more rugged, more uh, technical trails or single track. This shoe is up there. It is a really good option if you're looking for a shoe to kind of do it all. The Vibram lugs are short, they're about four millimeters. There's plenty of them so they don't get in the way or they don't feel uncomfortable under the foot if you're on uh, concrete or asphalt, but they are long enough uh, where you do get some good off-road grip. Just all around, it's just a really accommodating shoe and will work for a variety of situations. Uh, and so when you're talking about hybrid shoes, this is one of those that I am really digging. I ran on them today from our door to a trail and that is exactly the use case I find the most joy out of the shoe. So yeah. A lot of fun. That being said, it's not all Otter Pops and Strawberry Shortcake. There are a couple of things that I dislike about the Hoka One One Zanal. Let's get to those now. Cost. I have to point this out. It's $159 shoe. That is a lot for a shoe that is reduced in every uh, definition of the word, not only in stack, but in the amount of upper materials. There's just very little to the shoe. It's a great shoe, but it's an expensive shoe. 
So uh, that to me is my biggest dislike. I could shout from the rooftops how much I like this shoe and how much I think it's a great trail shoe and great for distances under 20 miles. But uh, when it's at $160, it's a lot. And durability. So while I'm not experiencing major durability issues at this point, I have about 70 to 75 miles in the shoe, I do foresee it being the main issue that people will have with the shoe, the more miles they put on it. So if you get up to 200, 300 miles in the shoe, I can see where and how it could potentially break down. The simplicity that I talked about earlier could be this shoe's Achilles heel. Uh, we don't have a lot of welded overlays on the upper. So we have one mesh that could break down. If you get it really dirty and that friction begins to build up, you're gonna have breakdown in the upper. Uh, the potted outsole, the Vibram, that's pretty much where most of the durability is gonna lie. You have a lot of the exposed ProFly material, that stuff tends to break down the more miles you put onto it. And with the 2218 stack, you don't have a lot of ProFly underfoot. So you don't have a lot of compensation for when that begins to flatten out. Again, right now, not necessarily an issue for me, but I can see where this shoe might potentially have durability issues for you. But that is it for dislike. So let's get deeper uh, in the breakdown where I talk about five different criteria, build quality, comfort, fit, price, and looks, starting with build quality. I think the shoe uh, uh, is built really great right out of the box. You're gonna have a lot of fun right out of the box. You're gonna enjoy those miles. I do foresee durability being issue, but I do like the simplicity of this build. I think it's uh, uh, just a great combo of a good mesh, a comfortable mesh, a comfortable platform with the ProFly and plenty of grip and uh, minimal lugs on the outsole. So you're getting everything that you want in a trail running package, as well as a hybrid shoe package, built up pretty well. It just might break down a little bit earlier than you'd hope. Comfort, it's got it. So I, I didn't know how comfortable this shoe would be, uh, especially with the lower stack, but when it comes to Hoka shoes and the ProFly midsole, it is comfortable, it's responsive, it's fast and zippy, just enough protection, just enough cushioning, plenty of grip, uh, and the gusseted tongue and the lacing system up top, they work for me. And for me, it is an accommodating shoe, has a roomier toe box, which of course I'm always a fan of. Fit, not super precision. So you're not gonna be getting any of that precision fit that you're getting from like Solomon Sense Pro, Solomon Sense Ultra, some of the new North Face Vective shoes have a real nice precision fit. You're not really gonna get that here, but you are going to get a more accommodating, uh, a little bit stretchier, a little bit more comfortable shoe. Honestly, it's really reminiscent of the Rincon and a little bit of the Torrent, and it really has those old homages is to the Huaca, which I loved from the early days of Hoka, but with a more accommodating toe box up front, which is a huge get. Price, obviously my biggest dislike, $159, right around 160 bucks. Uh, that is a really high price point for a shoe that I can imagine getting a couple hundred miles out of, and you're gonna be using for shorter distances with less materials, less mesh, all, you know, all that stuff in combination for an expensive shoe. Uh, it was a surprise for me, and it's probably the biggest detriment. And finally, looks. I've gotten actually a ton of compliments on this shoe, which is weird. Like sometimes people are like, what are those? And all that stuff. This shoe got a lot of comments from people. I really like it. I think this blue, orange, with some darker and lighter highlights is fun and bold. Um, I'm here for it. Summer 2021, the Zanal, man, I'm just hitting it out of the park. Bringing us to our conclusion. I love the Zanal. Um, I think it's a great shoe. I'm having a ton of fun in it. And it's really worked in a variety of situations for me, anywhere from 10, 15, 20 miles. I'm having a great time in it. You know, if you're trying to break speed records or you're, you're trying to do an up-tempo type run, there might be better shoes suited for those type of workouts. But when you're looking for a shoe that kind of does it all in that distance range, uh, from road to trail, man, this is this is definitely a hit. The fact that this has strong Huaca vibes uh, with a better fit is just icing on the Pro Fly cake. The biggest problem ultimately is gonna come down to price. When the similarly designed, yet yeah, maybe more stack underfoot Torrent 2 is priced at $120, a $40 decrease, I just can't justify the $160 price tag for the Zanal, which is a bummer because I prefer this over the Torrent. But by 40 bucks, I can't say that I do. Oh, but man, I like it. I like you. I do. Bringing us to our final criteria. Is the Hoka One One Zanal a buy, try, or a why? Uh, I would say buy, but you, you gotta take out a loan. Um, I'm gonna say try. It's, it's a heavy try because I do really like this shoe. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, uh, it's one of those shoes that I'm gonna be running hopefully a lot more miles in. I will report back on how long this thing lasts. I have a feeling it's gonna be in rotation for a while, especially through these summer months. I'm gonna be getting it super dirty, well, dirtier. It smells terrible. Uh, so I'll report back, maybe in the comments of this video, which actually turns us to our final 
question to you. In the comments of this video, let us know if it's a shoe that you might pick up or if you're even interested in it. Uh, but that, my friends, is it for today's review. If you liked it, like, favorite, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff, social media links, the whole doobly doo. We have some amazing stuff happening with the GR crew right now. We're doing daily live streams, trivia nights, book clubs, all sorts of good stuff. If you'd like to support everything that happens on this channel, but also be a part of a global community, running community, athletes from around the globe, just doing awesome things and supporting each other in the process, please consider joining us at patreon.com slash the ginger runner. That's the pitch. That's it. Happy summer, everybody. Hope you're stoked. I don't know what the hell that was. I apologize for it. And we'll see you next week. Thanks everyone. Get out there, train hard, race harder, party hardest. We'll see ya. Bye.